Sarah will present. And so, without further ado, I'm presenting Sarah Mazouz, who is a, a senior researcher at the, the CNRS and uh, CERAPS uh, in Lille. Uh, and she is a sociologist and uh, she works on um, anti discrimination policy and nationality laws on how specifically how they are implemented. I mean, it's more, she's more concerned by the uh, 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 how um, uh, level-based uh, agents are uh, described, deciding how to, to conduct uh, naturalization processes. And um, she has published um, in 2017, La République et ses autres, Politique uh, uh, de l'altérité dans la France des années 2000, and more recently, Race in 2020, which is this book, uh, which is a discussion about uh, how to study race in the French context. Um, and she will uh, give a paper uh, which title is A Rationalized Sense of National Belonging, French Naturalization Practices and the Unspoken, unspoken Making of Race. So we see how far it is close to what uh, Mirna said at the conclusion of her paper. Please, Sarah, you're on. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, yes, first and foremost, my thanks to Solène Brun, Patrick Simon, and all the organizers of the first international conference of the French Collaborative Institute on Migration. Uh, my presentation deals with French naturalization. And yes, I'm not using a PowerPoint, so you, you will be seeing me during the whole time. Um, my presentation deals with French naturalization and the way in which uh, the procedure of naturalization reveals a racialized conception of national belonging. My study draws uh, on an ethnographic survey I led in an office for naturalization in a prefecture of the Paris area between 2004 and 2005 and, and 2008. Uh, as you may say, the prefecture is the administrative office representing the state on a local level. My survey included the observation of the linguistic assimilation interviews where naturalization officers assess the applicant's level of French as well as their cultural assimilation. I also carried out interviews with members of the staff of the Office for Naturalization as well as with approximately 20 newly naturalized French citizens. Throughout my fieldwork, I could attend sessions wherein fingerprints used to create national identity cards were taken from newly naturalized individuals as well as ceremonies organized to award naturalization certificates, décret de naturalisation in French, and French IDs. When talking about naturalization, it is also important to recall that unlike the other way of acquiring a French citizenship, naturalization is defined in France as a favor made by the state to deserving foreigner applicants. It means that even if the applicant fulfills all the requirements, the state may refuse to grant him or her French citizenship. In other words, procedure distinguishes distinguishes among foreigner applicants those deemed worthy of joining the national community while granting citizenship through naturalization differentiates within the nation those who came from elsewhere. My main contribution to the analysis of naturalization process in France was then to show how conceiving the granting of French citizenship as a favor was paradoxically articulated to the assessment of the deservingness of the person to be naturalized. I also showed how naturalized French skip the reference to the favor and appropriate the idea of their deserving French uh, citizenship in a sense that. Uh, they are entitled to be French. In today's presentation, I would like to focus on the linguistic interviews to address through the bureaucratic practices of naturalization officers, the way in which they conceive French citizenship in a racialized way. But before that, I shall give a short overview of the existing studies I lent on when I started my own research. At the moment when I started my research, the existing studies on French citizenship fell, roughly speaking, into three categories. 
I present them and then try and address the way in which the issue of race is analyzed or not in these different cases. The first one presents a theoretical analysis of French, French citizenship and its relation to abstract universalism and the way in which this republican universalism is one of the core condition uh, of, uh, democratic def of the de democratic definition of citizenship. In this case, French citizenship is understood as the means to prevent from any form of unequal treatment and colorblindness is deemed to cancel the social effects of race. I would say that one of the most representative works of this first category is political thinker Dominique Schnappers, especially La Communauté des Citoyens sur l'idée moderne de nation, qu'est-ce que la citoyenneté and qu'est-ce que l'intégration. The second group of studies is at the intersection of history and political science. It addresses the process of national formation and the articulation between the way in which national belonging is conceived and the way in which the granting of citizenship is implemented. As in the previous group, the focus is not only on naturalization, as the different modes of acquiring citizenship are questioned indeed. Here, I will refer to Roger Brubaker's seminal work, Citizenship and Nationhood in France and Germany, the inspiring comparison he draws between French and German national formations, and the compelling argument he offers to understand how Yusseli was eventually introduced in the French Nationality Code of 1889. I would also mention Patrick Veil's crucial, crucial work, Esquatre Francais, which presents how the granting of citizenship changed since the ancient regime and how it was constantly redefined, redefined sorry, through crisis, expressing a deep anxiety on what is to be French. The third group leans on both, both history and sociology and draws on archival, uh, archival work as well as on interviews. The shared perspective of all the studies I would place here is to question the state and the social uses of law either through immigration policy or through legal provisions meant to regulate and define the access to French citizenship in the colonial context. Here, I would like to mention Gérard Noiriel's work, Le Creuset Français, and Alexis Spire, Étranger à la carte, l'administration de l'immigration. The latter was indeed crucial to me because he imported to the study of French administration John Lipsky's notion of street-level bureaucracy and the role it plays in the process of Im implementing and redefining public policies. Alex Spears' work also paved the way to my own work because it questions the use of discre discretionary power in the case of immigration policies and shows how the practices of street level bureaucrats in charge of immigration policies emphasize the use of the, this very power and thus offer a perfect lens to grasp it and examine the possible shift from the discretional to the, to the arbitrary. As to the colonial context, I shall mention two contributions which were major for my own research. Emmanuel Sada's work, Les Enfants de la Colonie, on French Indochina, and more especially, all her analysis on the racial definition of French citizenship in the case of children of mixed parentage with a French father, and Laure Blévy's study of naturalization procedure, which were, which were in the context of colonial Algeria, used to grant French citizenship to the colonial subject who had the French nationality without having the political rights. Blévy's work was also important because it showed how moral notions such as dignity were used in the case of this specific procedure. So this fed my own reflection on the interlocking of moralizing the access to French citizenship and racializing the applicants. However, what about race in these uh, different groups of studies I have already mentioned? Uh, these different works, especially the second and the third group I mentioned, work uh, um, focus sorry, on the, state, the French state and only examine the blatant and explicit expressions of racism when they happen to be. Uh, in other words, they address racism as an ideology and not race and racialization as social logic structuring along with class, gender, age, disability and sexuality, everyday interaction and uh, constantly producing 
hierarchy in the French Republican context. context. In other words, they only take into account the issue of race in contexts supposed to be exceptional and breaking the Republican norm of color blindness. For instance, they admit that race is an effective category in the colonial context, but show reluctance to address it in the Republican context of mainland France. They nonetheless, they nonetheless analyze the racist crisis of French citizenship, whether it is in the case of the Vichy regime or during controversies raised and led in the 80s by the National Front against the principle of use soli. So how I came to address the racialized dimension of citizenship? Uh, many factors contributed to that. First and foremost, my main question of research was racial discrimination, to which extent it was recognized in the French context and how anti-discrimination policy were, were hampered. Mm -hmm. When I started my fieldwork, the policy against racial discrimination was politically blocked. The committee uh, supposed to implement and lead the policy against racial discrimination stopped their activities. And the only clear result of their actions was the implementation of ceremonies granting naturalization certificates to newly naturalized French citizens. Therefore, I started my fieldwork at that time by observing the ceremonies. And during all my first years of research as a PhD student, I was considering with, with anxiety the possible articulation between both parts of my fieldwork, that one the one dealing with anti-discrimination and the one studying naturalization. However, from the very start of my work, I was considering that race, as well as gender, class, age, etc., socially interplay on a constant basis, even in contexts defined as colorblind. Of course, as I'm going to show, it in few moments, my observations brought an empirical confirmation to that, which I could formalize thanks to Philomena Said's notion of everyday racism, or thanks to the concept of racialization, as it was used after Fanon in British sociology, to make racializing processes explicit and problematize them in relation with a specific national and historical context. The second difference in my approach is, I suppose, that I was leaning on an ethnographic methodology that led me to pay attention to the relationship between institutions and subject, the role of bureaucratic practices in subjective formations, and especially how these practices spawn or at least reinforce identity ascription. Although there, there, there would be a lot to say about the naturalization ceremonies, I'm going to focus here on during the last part of my presentation on naturalization interviews and the process of assessing assimilation in its so-called linguistic di dimension as well as in its cultural aspect to show how this notion is grounded on racialized conception on a racialized conception of citizens. Uh, first, I would like to give you some more elements about the naturalization officers. The prefecture, the prefecture bureaucrats who conduct these interviews are street-level bureaucrats. They belong to the lowest grade of state employees and learn on the job without having received any specific training in law relating to foreigners or to citizenship and nationality law. The way they process application depends, in fact, on their training within the Office for Naturalization, since they are encouraged to do as their colleague uh, do, um, I mean, as their colleague who have the longer experience do and proceed. They also merely follow the way in which their supervisor, I mean, the head of the Office for Naturalization, interprets state implementing circulars. Among the, those I interviewed and observed in their daily practice, three were white and two were French of North African origin, and they were all women. <coughs> Sorry. Even if uh, those who were of North African origin tried to make the interviews be a nicer moment, uh, these officers um, were sharing at least some of the racializing and derogatory category categorizations about the applicant. 
As I have already told you, a deserving frame structure the whole procedure of naturalization. Leaning on bureaucratic practices and the use of their discretionary power, the officers conceived the procedure as an ordeal meant to test the applicant. By playing with time to test their motivation, for example, uh, during the interview by assessing the assimilation of the applicant through their proficient, proficiency in French, through their insertion in, a, in French society, etc. By assessing also during the linguistic assimilation interview, the cultural assimilation of the applicant, which is indirectly assessing their attachment to Islam as um, the officers systematically pay attention to the fact for women of wearing a hijab and for both women and men of being involved in Muslim NGOs and uh, being uh, polygamous. In this context, racialization plays a role in the interaction between the naturalization officers and applicants. It reveals how the officers racially ascribe the applicants to an identity supposed to be inferior in terms of civilization because the applicants' country are of origin are not democratic, because the applicants' way of life, because of the applicants' ways of life, because of their religion, or because of their level of education. In this regard, the category of Muslim is telling and has to be uh, analyzed in, in relation uh, to the colonial era. This interaction and many comments made by the officers also reveal how French citizenship is still understood as a white citizenship, which is uh, the other dimension of the racialized conception of national belonging appearing throughout the process of naturalization. So I'm going to uh, give you three ethnographic vignettes and then analyze them um, shortly. Uh, Mr. Longomba originally, so the first thing I uh, would like to, to focus on uh, the issue of the knowledge of French and how it, it has to do with a uh, racialized uh, conception of uh, uh, French citizenship. Mr. Longomba, originally from Congo Brazzaville, holds a management qualification and at the time of the interview worked as a manager in a company. He arrived in France as a student in 1985 and first applied to be naturalized in the early 90s and unsuccessfully. As he underscored several times in the interview, it took him 20 years after arriving in France to finally become French by being naturalized in February uh, 2005. When I asked him about the interview he had during his application for French citizenship, he told me that he was asked about his fluency in Fr French, while fl French is his native language, if not his mother tongue. He also explained to me that one of his friends, uh, who was from Congo Brazzaville as well, and was a novelist, writing in French, was asking the same question. On the contrary, a white-skinned interviewee coming from English-speaking Canada was not asked questions regarding his knowledge of French. While revealing a racialized definition of citizenship, this also shows the shift from the issue of citizenship and national belonging to that of culture and race. The second element that plays uh, in, this, uh, in the assessment of uh, the applicant and reveals uh, um, a racialized uh, conception of uh, national belonging is the assessment of the applicant's degrees. Uh, for instance, uh, I'm well, going to read another extract from my field notes. Madame Thibault, one of the bureaucrats I observed, asks an applicant of Bangladeshi origin about level of education. Explains to her that he reached a level equivalent to the baccalauréat, so end of high school diploma in France. He specifies that uh, the names are different and that the system is not the same as in France. She, she exclaims, oh, in Bangladesh, it seems everyone gets to baccalaureate level. I can well imagine that it is not the same level. She is therefore about to write that he has a level of primary education. She says, I quote, write well, well, 
put primary, end of quote, she says at one point. Uh, despite the fact that it is clear from what the applicant is saying that he continued studying long after primary school. He then says college in reference to the English meaning of the word. She writes college in its French meaning, which corresponds to the level of junior high school. This kind of misunderstanding and value judgment occurred in all the interviews with applicants from India, Pakistan and Bangladesh I could attend. When the candidates specifically stated that things were different than in France, the bureaucrats took it as recognition on the part of the applicants that there was a difference in value between the qualifications they had obtained in the country of origin and French qualifications. In other words, the bureaucrats understand it as the confirmation of what they already think about the discrepancy between French degrees and degrees offered in countries such as Bangladesh, India or Pakistan. Moreover, moreover falling into the trap of a false cognate, as in the example with the English term college, also serves as a revealing blunder when the bureaucrats try to assess the applicant's educational level, they base their evaluation more upon shared categories of perception about the education system in the country of origin than upon what the applicant actually tell them. Beyond the typical expression, uh, beyond the typical expression of patronizing judgment, we can see here how this behavior has to do with whiteness also. Uh, and what is also very telling in this whole process of assessing, uh, um, assessing uh, the, the applicant uh, level of education is the way in which French, uh, French degrees uh, are, um, are assessed. And for instance, it is seen that the applicant it is good to have French uh, to have French uh, degrees, but these degrees should not be too high. And it um, so the whole thing is to place uh, the applicant in a kind of postponed equality with French citizens who were born French. Uh, third element: um, the racialized meaning, racialized meaning of looking good. When we observe uh, linguistic uh, assimilation interviews, we can see that most candidates also make an effort to be well-dressed when they attend them. Most of uh, them wear classic clothing, clothing in dark and discreet colors. Some female applicants seem to have gone to the hairdressers for a blow dry in this, and in this specific case, where for black and North African women, this means having their hair straightened. Uh, this also indic indicates that presenting well involves attempting to erase a racialized phenotypic marker. So the way in which they try to look good shows they keenly feel how administrative and moral um, requirements interlock throughout the naturalization procedure and how racialized categories and judgment underpin the way naturalization officers assess them. Looking good has also to do with the racialization of Islam and the idea that Muslim are the anti-French. I'm going to read another extract. Um, uh, the applicant who comes uh, is, in is wearing a hijab and a grey Punjabi uh, dress over a pair of white pants. Madame Thibault asks her for her identity paper. The woman hesitates and seems not to understand. The officer seems to already have lost her patience and tells the candidate straight away that he's to, going to be difficult. In fact, from the moment at which this lady seems not, not to not understand French very well, the officer acts as if she were not present and starts making comments about her to me. She then asks her if she knows what her husband does. The applicant responds restaurant with English pronunciation. The, the official immediately picks up on, on this. That's in English. And he turns to me and explains that it is going to be over very quickly. 
And then after the whole um, the whole interview, uh, Madame Thibault gave me the explanation and added to conclude how she, in order to explain how she was going to assess this uh, in the, this uh, application. And she told me, anyway, you saw she was wearing a hijab, so there is a lack of integration in our custom. And she presented that as the reason for her decision to give an unfavorable opinion on the applicant. And then when we talk about um, about uh, Islam with other officers, what we see is that through the, 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 the issue of polygamy and the image of women, of hijabi women, uh, the idea is that it is like, you know, a cultural uh, backwardness uh, and something which is absolutely uh, the opposite figure of uh, what is to be a French citizen. I'm, I'm going to, I can come back to that during the discussion because I have to conclude. And so um, we, th we see through the deserving frame that structure, the whole procedure, how the granting of citizenship interlocks uh, with the idea of being worthy of becoming French. This, this very idea of being worthy of becoming French can only reinforce rationalizing ascription as it places the officers in a position where they are supposed to epitomize the value and the values of the nation and where, and where they are entitled to highlight the moral and cultural lacks of the applicants. To do so, they lean on and reactivate racialized conceptions underpinning the, the definition of citizenship. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much.